I'm going to show you how to create a smart mock-up to show off your designs and we're going to do it for absolutely free. And a smart mock-up is something that you can use over and over again for your designs that allows the pleats and curves in the shirt and the shadows to show through to make it look like an actual printed garment. So while everyone else is just dragging and dropping their artwork on top of a flat lay mock-up and then reducing the opacity a bit, ours are going to look like they were actually printed. And this is important because while design is the number one thing to get your listing sold, the second most important thing is the presentation. And I promise you a crappy mock-up can tank an amazing design. So you want to make sure you're on point. So here we go. So the first thing we want to do is come to photopea.com. It is entirely free, which is nice. We're just going to click on new product. We're going to make it 2,500 by 2,500 pixels. And you can leave it at 72 DPI. That's the standard for on screen. And we'll just click create. The next thing we're going to do is drag in our mock-up. In this case, mine is from Etsy. And we'll just make it kind of big enough to fit the artboard here. Then we can just go ahead and delete our background. So this effectively becomes our background. So the next thing I'm going to do is come over here to this lasso tool here to select. I'm just going to click polygonal just so it's a little bit easier. And we're just going to kind of select the area where the design would actually go onto. So we don't have to be too crazy here because or too perfect because it's not actually going to come all the way over all of uh, the entire shirt here, right? So it's going to be contained mostly inside of this. And then I'm just going to do a command J so that it duplicates this layer here, but only with the selection. So I'll, it'll be control J on a PC. So I'm just going to command J. And now we've got a layer here and I can just uh, select this and I can show you this. So we've only got the layer of the piece that we marked out there. I'm just gonna come over here and double click this. I'm gonna call it shadows and highlights. I'll do that right now. And then I'm just going to turn it off here, hide it. And I'm gonna create a new layer now and drag layer one down here. So this is gonna be our design layer. So you just wanna make sure it's underneath the shadows and highlights and above our actual markup itself. I'm just gonna call it click to place design. And on this layer, I just have to now mark out where I think our design will go. So I'm just going to click on this polygonal lasso tool again. And we're just going to be a little, little quicker about this one. Because that should do it there. Just kind of center that a little bit. And then I'm just going to fill it in with a different color that is not the design here. See the gradient tool here? I'm just going to click and hold and it'll populate this. So we've got our paint bucket tool here. It's already selected red. So I'm just going to come in here and click on our selection. It's going to paint it red. That way we can easily tell that it's the design layer. The next thing we're going to do here on the shape layer is just right click on it. And we're going to convert to smart object. And you can tell it's a smart object because it's got this tiny little square there. And then I'm just gonna reduce the opacity on this a bit while uh, I have that selected, just so we can see the shirt behind it, just to make sure it's kind of where we want it to be. Looks good to me. Then I'm going to turn on our shadows and highlights layer. And this is going to allow us to add these shadows here and these kind of highlights to our design. So the first thing we need to do is click to place our design. So you just come over this actual image here. If you click over here, it's just going to allow you to edit the name. We don't want to do that. We actually want to edit this. And you'll see right here, there's uh, just this project tab here. This will populate with this one here. Just double clicking. And now it's opened a new one here. So it says click to place design. I can hide this and then I can just drag and drop another design layer in, which will be our design here. And this is just a design I got from uh, Creative Fabrica. So I'm just going to leave it as is and I'm going to hit a command S or control S on a PC, which is save. Smart object updated. Now I'm going to come back over here. And now if I deselect this shadows and highlights button or hide it, you can see that we place a design here. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see this. It kind of looks all right, but nowhere near as true or real as it should, right? Like there's no shadows coming in over this. It just looks literally like as if we dragged and dropped our artwork right on top of the mock-up. So we want to see the shadows and the highlights now. So we're going to add them and we want to see some of this little bit of texture, right? Coming through, especially if you had like a, you know, a knit sweater or something like that, you'd want to see the texture showing through, right? So I'm just going to enable this now. So we make it visible. I'm just going to select this. 
You'll know because it's the light gray, we still had this one selected. So I'm selecting right here. Then I'm gonna to come to image, adjust, and then desaturate. And then I am going to come over here where we have right beside opacity here, you'll see this uh, normal. I'm gonna change that to hard light. And now you can see this kind of showing through. So I'll zoom out again. And now I'm just gonna right click on this and make a clipping mask. And you can see this arrow here is pointing down to the design here. So it's only going to impact this design when we screw around with it. It's not going to do or change anything else on this uh, mock-up at all. Next up, we have to change the actual levels of the shadows and highlights. So you can either just do a Command L or Control L, or you can do uh, image, adjust and levels. You can see the command sign there. And then we're gonna play around with this until it looks good and real. So we've got our design back there. We wanna keep a little bit of this, little bit of shadows here. We wanna darken, bring this down a bit so you can still see the pink nice and Good. And you can see how it's getting darker here, right? On these edges, you just kind of play around with this until it looks right. We don't want it too dark, right? We had it really dark there. We don't want it too dark. We just want to make sure that we have, you know, some shadows on the darker parts like in here, and it's a little bit brighter or washed out a little on the parts that are extra bright. So now we've kind of got, you know, some darkened spots here, a little bit lighter here, right? And a little bit darker as you come over this one crease, a little bit darker in here too. And then I'll click OK. So now that we got the shadows and highlights kind of sorted here, I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And you can kind of see now, like if I turn off the shadows and highlights layer, it looks back just like a crappy mock-up, right? Where somebody just kind of pasted it on top. So I'm going to leave that deselected right now, but I notice it's, you know, a little lower than I wanted, right? So I'm just going to move it up a bit. And I can turn that back on and you can see how it's impacted here. Looks so much more realistic, right? And then I'm going to warp this a little because it's not, you know, necessarily conforming to the body shape at all. So while I have my design again selected, I'm just going to <coughs> edit transform and warp. Then you have all these anchor points that you can just kind of drag around and do whatever you want with. But what all we need to do is literally just grab anywhere on here. So I can pull this in a bit and pull this guy in a bit. We can kind of make this come out, right? So we're conforming to the body a bit and we can bring these in a little here. We can bring these in a little here something like that. So now it's kind of got the perspective of going over her chest, right? So it looks more realistic here. You can kind of just tweak this now. So you can see now if I hit enter, it is a little more realistic now, right? And then I'll just re-enable this. And now we've got our shadows and highlights again. I actually want to darken that a bit. That looks a little better. And now that's essentially done. So I will just, you know, command S to save everything or shift command S to save as, or you can go file right here save as PSD. So I will save as PSD and we'll just call it CC Comfort Colors 1717 Smart Mockup. And maybe we'll just go Ivory. So I know exactly what it is in my folders, what I'm looking for, right? I'll just leave it on my mockups folder and click save. And if you ever wanted to change this, all we have to do is now click to place design. So we're just going to double click on that. It's going to open this next tab. And then all we have to do is place our new design I just drag and drop you over top, you know, keep it kind of relatively the same area as this. And we can just hide this one now and just hit a command S smart object updated. You can come back to our mock up here and you can see that it's got the highlights and shadows, right? You can see how it's darker here now, and it's slightly curved a little bit. And this is the shadows and highlights layer. It's the one it's selected right now, but I'm just showing you, you can see the highlights and shadows that we had beneath it, right? And that's it. If we wanted to change it again, we could always just come back to this one. We can hide this guy as well and pick a different one. Size it to fit, Control S, Command S, Smart object updated, and we can zoom in here and you can see how the shadows look super realistic on this. You can see a bit of the texture showing through from the shirt. It just looks so much more real. 
and it's slightly warped to conform. If I was to get rid of this, you'll see what it looks like without and what it looks like with, right? So much more realistic. This is what's going to set you apart from the competition out there. And then to save it for the Etsy or Shopify's of the world. So in Photoshop, it would be option command S to save a copy on here uh, in photo P, which is free. You can just export as a PNG or JPEG. We can change the name now to something, you know, more suitable for the design. So maybe it's Xmas 001 out of however many Christmas designs we have. We could leave it as ivory and that would be it, right? And then we'll just save. I would suggest that you name this the same as the artwork itself. That way there's no confusions. You know which mock-up goes for which actual artwork, but that's all there is to it. And you can do the same thing now for maybe two or three other mock-ups in your shop. And that way you have a cohesive vibe throughout. You don't need a ton of them. The other nice thing about these smart mock-ups is you can actually sell these on Etsy now. So if we went back to having this here, all you have to do is delete these three layers, make this visible, control S to save it. And then you can come over here and now you've got our red uh, block here with the shadows and highlights showing through. We would just, again, double click it, drop our design on there. Let me know down below if there's any other tips or tricks you want me to go through and help you figure out how to do, and I'll do my best to get them done for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.